The industrial share fund is probably Australia's, one of Australia's longest running unit trust. It has first records back in 1966, but the performance has been uh, uh, judged from 1976, which is a, a, a year close to, close to home for me, it was the year I was born. One feature of, of the industrial share fund is the fact it survived over, for more than five decades. You've seen so many investment funds, portfolio managers come and go in that period, We've seen speculative fads come, come and go, yet it survived over that period. Not only has it survived, it's thrived. $1,000 invested in 1976 to April 2021 would have given you $288,000. I know active investment is, is not trendy at the moment, but this shows how, how valuable active management can be. The Industrial Share Fund, by its name, is, invests in ASX listed companies, it, uh, but it does not invest in resources companies. So it can invest in financial services, telecommunications, tourism, uh, other service industries, but doesn't invest in resources companies. That's what makes it unique amongst the perpetual universe. More recently, I became the sole portfolio manager after it was a co-portfolio manager. There is very little change in, in the overall portfolio. The idea here is to have more conviction uh, and more representation of our conviction ideas within the portfolio. The Industrial Share Fund has performed very strongly relative uh, to the index over the last 12 months coming out of this crisis. It's not unusual uh, for the Industrial Share Fund to do very well coming out of crisis, whether it be 1987, um, whether it be the tech bubble or the uh, GFC. Why is that the case? Well, typically we don't participate in bubbles because we don't chase speculative fads. We don't chase companies where there's big talking CEOs and excess leverage. That's just not our style. We do focus on companies where there is a sustainable business model with a conservative balance sheet and a great management team. Those companies tend to perform very well on the other side of, uh, of any crisis. We have had a good 12 months as the market has shifted its focus on fundamentals over, over speculation and we expect that to continue. Do we see the shift in value, uh, to value continuing? Look, I like framing the debate as momentum versus fundamental value. Growth versus value makes the implication that we, don't, that, that we as value managers don't like growth, we do. But what we've seen over the last decade is that um, momentum has been extremely strong. What I mean by that is that the best trade which has worked for everyone has been by structurally growing companies with big talking CEOs at any price uh, and sell anything which is not growing um, at any price. And that's, that's actually been made it quite tough for fundamental value uh, investors like ourselves. We see this beginning to change as we're starting to see interest rates tick up again and the economy is starting to tick up again. That means that, that growth is no, is no longer scarce. It also means that uh, long duration assets, and what I mean by long duration assets, there's companies which might not be making any money today, but looking to make money in 15 years. In a zero interest rate world, they're worth a lot. But in a, in a world where interest rates are starting to increase, they start to sell off. That's not what we're invested in. We're invested, as we said before, we're invested in sustainable business models, companies which are generating cash flow with a very good management team. One thing we think is going to happen over the next 12 or 18 months is people are going to start buying more experiences rather than things. And when people start buying experience, we think that once the travel bubble's open, it's going to be quite a bit of a boom. So we've got investments within Event. We've been investing in Event for a long time. Qantas, which we only really just bought in the capital raising last year, um, and Crown Casino, are companies which we think will do very well from a reopening perspective. Other sectors which interest us, uh, we think the financial sector does quite well in a, raising, a rising rate environment. With increasing inflation, we think credit growth is going to increase and companies like insurers and banks are going to start making money off the asset side of their balance sheet. The last one is, is some, some of these more heavy industrial companies which have had 10 or 15 years of which have been really tough, but we've seen consolidation in their space. So once we start seeing economic activity bounce back, the demand supply dynamics look really attractive. Companies like Blue Scope or Fletcher Building or even Cube Logistics are companies which we're invested in as well. Mm -hmm.